So yeah, this run of Black Widow has me so stoked, man. It's not only one of the few comics where I actually look forward to catching it day one, but one of the very few comics like ever to have me really stoked because of the writers themselves, right? Quite often in this day and age, I just you know, I find myself grabbing a comic book solely just based off the character. I like the character and the writing is more of a secondary, not with this run of Black Widow, I've always liked the character of Black Widow, but the Sasuke sisters really bring this character to life and they are like really what's keeping me around and I cannot overstate that point. They did a phenomenal job on the first issue, no corny teeny bopper, you know, girl power stuff, just a kick-ass character really addressing a legitimate sort of issue in today's day and age, which other writers wouldn't dare really touch, not in this day and age of comics. So of course I have the second issue here and I got back from Mexico right in the perfect time to really catch it first day day one release so remember the first issue dealt with like black widow heading to madripoor she linked up with tiger and tiger told her there's this sort of underground clique that is abducting these girls and then selling really their agency to the highest bidder during this game called no restraints play we left off with Tiger asking for help and Black Widow ready to kick some ass, but not until they ran into what looked like to be a ringleader part of this clique. Let's dive into issue number two. Again, Jen and Sylvia Sasuke are the writers and Flaviano is the artist. The colorist is Veronica Gandini. We are picking up right after where we left off on the first issue. And Tiger and Black Widow, you know, they went outside to be confronted by this goofy looking guy by the name of Pirate King. He's upset at the fact that Black Widow kicked all of his men's asses when she first got on the island. And I love how this starts because right out the gate, we are seeing how cutthroat Black Widow is, right? Pirate King, as an example, basically is holding these, <laughs> these girls hostage, right? And Pirate King says that, well, you gotta play my silly little game uh, or I'm gonna do something to these girls, right? Black Widow's like, fuck all of that, bro. You don't make the rules. So war breaks out. Power Kings like kill all of these women, but bring me Black Widow alive. Now Black Widow is slicing these fools up, man. She kicks this guy up here. You can see his bones sticking out on the other side of his leg. After she kicked him in the leg, she slices this guy's leg clean off. Um, but the dialogue I think here is really important to highlight because it really captures where she is mentally. Pirate King, for example, sends a threat her way and she's basically like, death ain't really nothing to me, man. She also uh, is getting a kick out of tearing these fools up. She feels like she is in her element. And going uh, to the next page, even more so, she's expressing why she is so cutthroat since she's already been killed before. Now she doesn't have time to be crying for everybody. But anyway, the Power King tries to get away. <laughs> uh, but she breaks the window, drags his ass out the car, and she starts, she starts slamming the damn door, the car door, on his head. The sucker tried to salvage himself by saying he doesn't hurt the little girls that are forced to participate. He just watches, right? Man, they deserve whatever they have coming to them. And as you can see uh, here, she's she's tied all of these men up. If I can get over this, she's tied all of these men up to the car and uh, she's driving around looking for these answers. So Widow is on top of the car shouting to the public saying that anybody that plays this game, they gotta come see her. It doesn't matter if you pay, watch it, whatever. She's not playing any sort of games. Now moving on. Remember, you know, you know, Black Widow is super powerless, but the one thing that she is known for doing that's really unique to her is going undercover, wearing disguises, blending in, picking things up. This is just what she does. She knows that her antics will get people talking. So now she's just poking around trying to get answers as to what's the source of all of this. Now you see that she's taken uh, numerous sort of looks, different disguises here. Now right here, uh, she's overhearing these two guys talking about no restraints play as they're playing pool. And she runs up on them. She socks one of them in the face. She throws a pool ball at the others, you know, in the back of his head. And one of the men concedes his access card to the feed of this game. 
But that really didn't do him any good because he ended up getting a pool stick shoved down his throat. Now, this ain't no sexual in your window or anything like that. That's literally what happened. She's not playing any sort of games. So Black Widow, of course, gives the card to Tiger's tech guy, and it ain't that easy as to, you know, they really can't track the original feed. All of the videos they can find are just re-uploaded, right? But out of nowhere, this old lady appears looking for Black Widow, saying that she has something to show her, not even knowing if this is a trap or not, Black Widow goes to follow her, right? And this just sort of shows how determined she is. But she's led to a little girl that has her hands chopped off. And this is the old lady's daughter. And the little girl lets her in on all of what happened to her, how she got away, uh, and, and then it, you know what time it is. It's time for Black Widow to get back to work. And of course, this is an emotional sort of scene, by the way. But Black Widow now, she's back on the prowl, back as a spy, on the spy game. And we get a glimpse of a couple of classic villains, such as Baron Zemo and Sabretooth, who are supposedly trying to link up with the Prince of Majapur. That's the island that they're on. Now, continuity is important to me, man. Y'all know that. So I love the fact that she she doesn't know all of their angles, but she knows that Zemo is leading a country in Begalia. If you've been keeping up with the Punisher series and I've done videos on this, this is exactly what is taking place over there. Now, anyway, Black Widow is preparing uh, her sniper, as you can see here at the bottom. And she spots a guy with the same damn tattoo that the girl mentioned earlier when uh, she was speaking to the girl that had her hands chopped off, uh, talking about one of her abusers. And right as she's prepared to shoot, she's smacked by who? Madam Mosk. Now, dog, I haven't heard about this character in forever, but we end this issue with Madam Mosk saying that um, she may have fooled others, Natalie, aka okay, Black Widow, that is, but nobody gets away from her. And she actually pulls the trigger of her pistol. What a hell of a cliffhanger, am I right? Look, I'm gonna say it again, and I don't care how you feel about it. So far, this run of Black Widow is among some of my favorite current runs, and it's not just because this is aimed at a more mature audience, right? Because it is. But when I say that she's a female character done right, I'm not saying that to pigeonhole female characters. I'm saying that because many female comic book characters to this day and age are ruined by this go-go gadget girl power sort of stuff, and these arcs that seem to be written towards like uh, middle schoolers, right? It's like the only reason that they exist is to be a female, but not with Black Widow. She maintains her femininity, but she's hella kick ass. She's also not so far fetched that she's completely different from previous Black Widows, like just with a same name. Nope, Natalie is still a spy. She's just cutthroat. This is a dark comic, and this was a bold thing to really allow the Sasuke sisters to attack. So big shout out to Marvel for letting them do this their own way, right? This has a relevant feel to it because it deals with a topic of human trafficking. And just like it triggers the hell out of me in real life, it triggers Black Widow, it makes you wanna root for her. And the story itself is really intriguing, right? But she isn't without flaw either, considering the end of this particular issue where it seems like she's caught dead to rights. Now look, make no mistake, the art and the color work, shout out to Flaviano and those guys, they did a great job, right? But what's keeping me around, keeping me intrigued is the writing, which is rare for me right now. If it were up to me, Marvel would just let Jen and Sylvia do whatever the hell they want with so many different characters because they seem like they know what they are doing, right? So if you wanna incentivize them to do that, man, go pick up this issue, go pick up the first issue, just pick up both issues and keep following this. All of the complaints that I have and I make these videos about regarding like current lines of comics, man, the Sasuke sisters don't make any of those mistakes. So big shout out to the Sasuke sisters. We're gonna chat about it in the comments here. But until next time, man, y'all be easy.